You read the title right, there is a free Texas coming in to the next update and Pure Stream might finally be entering the game at some point in time. Let's cover all the details of the things that I couldn't put in the previous video and then at the same time, we're going to clarify some stuff about the previous video right from the beginning. Welcome everyone, I'm Cookie Kazi over here and it's kind of morning again that I chose to film this video. I don't know why I've been filming the videos in the morning but oh well, I guess maybe the most refreshed point in time and you know what, I'm enjoying the fact that I'm resting very well. This is a date week that we're experiencing finally in Arknights nights after so long and it's a good time to get yourself some rest all right please calm down with the fact that you know there's no next event release date or whatsoever it's gonna come it's probably gonna come next week at this rate but then enjoy this coming time to the fullest it's very rare for us to see a date week right we'll be getting events after event and now we're finally in a lull period so take it all in so answering questions for the previous video that i made let's start with the most common one that i was asked are medals re-obtainable when these events are permanently added so a bit of a sad info, if you've never obtained the medals from the previous event, you can't re-obtain really these medals anymore. Apparently the condition of these medals is that you can only obtain them when the event is running. So if they're permanently added, it means no more medals collection. Uh, if you go into the medals list, it would say that that event has ended already. So you can't obtain that. So for some reason, some medals are actually still obtainable, even though they're permanently added, but most of them are not. So if you've never completed a full medal set, don't be disheartened, don't be sad by it. I myself, I also have medal sets that I'm not complete with. There's things like CC2 and CC4 that I played and I'm missing one medal out of the entire full set. So I lost my full set because Dumbo Brain here forgot to do something about each of these CCs and you know, I just dealt with it. All right. You may have a lot of medal sets that you're not done, but at the end of the day, medals don't give rewards. Medals are just something that you flex in your profile. So it's fine to miss a medal set of two. If you really care about medals, then go and get them when the next few events come in to get more and more pretty stuff to put in your account. Okay, this is also another critical info I must say. Um, there's no event rewards for people who are playing the permanent map. Some people are saying, what new players are getting all the old rewards and then we had to work our butt off just to get all of these rewards and these guys just come in and take everything? No. The good thing about old players is that you guys have played all the events in the past already. Meaning to say you guys got all the rewards from the event store, especially once when it first ran and then the rerun store, that's another time that you get free rewards. New players don't get the better of it, alright? New players don't even get the chance to obtain these event medals. So if you're a veteran player, understand that you already got lots of good stuff. The benefit for new players now is that they can play these event stages they've never played before and they can get the original primes they missed from the event also along with the storylines of that event that they may have missed out on. So if I'm not wrong, you can reread the story when the events come back. So that's a benefit, especially for the new players. A lot of people are happy when I stated that Granny is going to be added as a permanent event. But one thing you guys need to understand is that Granny as a welfare operator is still not obtainable in the game yet. Her entire event is added for us to play and for us to enjoy, but she will be obtainable in a future update. And the problem with this future update is that it's very far. It's at least 7 months from now that Granny will be added into the record restore. I'm not sure why CN chose to start with Ceylon as the record restore and then they're now moving to Flamebringer which it feels like what happened to Granny? Why is Granny like forgotten behind right now? But eventually Granny will be added into record restore just not yet. So you can enjoy the storyline and see her sprite but you gotta hold on until we get this welfare operator coming again. Oh, I forgot to put something nice for you guys. Let me put Kelsit here. Next one to answer. Event exclusive skins. So I stated event exclusive furniture. I stated event exclusive operator being added into the record restore in the future. What about event exclusive skins? Are they also added to that record restore that we'll get in the next update? Um, event exclusive skins will be given separately. So if let's say there's an event exclusive skin like Matterhorn or Castle that you've never gotten, they're added to the CC store. So if you check the contingency contract store now, I think there are some rerun skins that's within there and these all came from events. You need to save up some contract bounties, hold back when buying materials when the CC event runs and then spend those contract bounties for the skins instead. So this is with the condition that you actually want these skins and that's the avenue they're gonna put all the free skins in the future unless they change something up in like a future update. Final clarification, if let's say there's a new player who joined Arknights right now, they're gonna experience a whole new tutorial that gets them through the new menu interface. So if let's say you want to convince some of your friends to come and play, I think now's a good time to get them to play. Did I say that's the final point just now? One more clarification I need to give. 
some players have stated wait if let's say there's this whole menu change then what's going to happen to my front screen where's the main operator and whatnot maybe i didn't make it clear when i presented the video but the combat terminal change is only that you know when you enter the stages that particular button i think it's called strategies right now or it's called combat i'm not sure what is it called but they changed that naming to terminal that's it and then when you enter there then you get that whole new menu interface and on the outside you can still see your main operator and you still need to be able to assess the recruit and hit hunting if the main interface was the main menu that i showed you in the previous video then how can you do your recruit how can you go pull your operator see your squad and see your base that kind of thing so that screen is still going to be your welcome home screen all right don't worry about that okay i took so long to clarify many many details let's cover the new stuff that i didn't get to talk about in the previous video so first one there is a new pinball mission phase 8 that's going to be added to the game so in the current game right now it's at pinball phase 7 and it has all those missions for you to clear whereby you need to get like an operator to e2 some operators to potential 6 and then do the base and whatsoever so if you completed these missions you're probably going to get this blank screen and there's going to be a new screen 8 that will appear so the reward of phase 8 is it's texas you can get a free texas if you complete all the nine missions in phase 8 I don't have the details of the 9 missions of the phase 8 because I went scurrying in Google a lot and even some of the CN sites but I'm not good enough to serve the CN sites to the point that I can find them. So I actually have no clue what are the 9 missions that you have to clear but you can assume that it's harder than the ones in phase 7 that I'm showing you right now. So once you clear all of that, all of you can get a free 5 star to use in your account. If you don't have Texas, then new Texas for you. And if you have Texas ready, then it's a Texas port for you to get. This is sounding pretty damn good already. Now the next quality of life change, if let's say you're in recruitment, there is now a button that you can one tap it in order to jump the recruitment time from zero hours to nine hours. So if you need to set your operator to nine hours, you don't have to click nine times anymore in order to get it up to nine hours. There's a single tap button and then pop, you can get your recruitment done. Then again though, don't go 9 hours on everything. 7 hour 40 is the way to go. If you do not know why I'm saying 7 hour 40 is the way to go, go and watch one of my two videos or three videos. Man, I've made so many videos about recruitment telling people to do 7 hour 40. I have strong reasons for that. Go and find out in those videos. Next part, skills explanation function. So I think this is a long time coming. This is quite beneficial, especially for people who have been very confused by the skills that appears in the game. So right now, when you read all sorts of operators or enemies or even base details, when you look into one of their profiles, you'll see that the terms are going to get underlined this time. And when you click on the underlined term, an explanation will pop up. So on the top left, it's explaining what it means when someone says that an operator is stunned after a skill is done, which means that the block count is dropped and then they cannot attack and all that kind of things. To the right of it, there's a frozen function, which is explaining what happens if an operator gets frozen, whereby their ASPD will drop, and then afterwards they get frozen if they stay freezing for too long. And there's more skills that they also explain in this one screen with things like resist and even explaining Rosmontis base skill, perception of thought and chain of thought. So again, three particular screens are getting more details. Number one, enemy intelligence, which is great as this is giving you guys more reason to go and read the enemy intelligence before you jump into the stage. Number two, operator skills explanation. If you've been confused by what someone does and then they have a very difficult word like resist or maybe you see the word inspire, you click on them then you will know what they're gonna do. And base skills, especially some of the people who have very confusing skills like Tachanka with that whole Ursus drink thing, or again, as mentioned, there's Rosmontes. I think Whisperin might be someone else that has a confusing skill as well. All these skills are receiving more in-depth info as to how they work. So this is a huge improvement to your experience when playing Arc Knights. I've got another sweet change to share with you guys. The base workshop is getting a little bit of a change such that when you set maximum production for a workshop, instead of going to 99 items, it's gonna cap out at the operator's sanity. So for example, if you're producing a 2 morale item and you put a full morale operator within it, so that means 24, right? So this operator, when you set it to max, then it's gonna go all the way up to 12 items only. If you press max again, then it'll go all the way up to 99. But you probably won't need to go 99 because there's no point. The morale is going to be overcapped. So this is very, very nice. Now you don't have to keep tapping in order to get the amount of morale that you want. So one single tap, you will cap out at the operator's sanity and they produce it for you. So this is yet another big quality of life change that is appreciated. Ooh, there's two operators that I need to name in particular that have received buffs. The first operator is Earth Spirit. So if you have an E1 Earth Spirit right now, her recruitment speed is going to go up by 30%, speaking of the current Earth Spirit. But in the next update, Earth Spirit is going to get a buff 
whereby the HR speed is going to increase from 30% to 45%. So her HR bar had only two bars. She's going to have that two bars jump to a five bar, meaning she's exactly at the same position as AF Fiela because AF Fiela is the only one with plus 45% recruitment speed. This can be very nice. Maybe it gives you more reason to build Earth Spirit to E1 minimum so that you can get more of the recruitment refreshes that you want. Very good skill for new players to get the recruitment speed up very quickly. But I wouldn't say that there is a huge must to build Earth Spirit. It really depends on yourself. Another operator also received buff. Lei Zi received a buff whereby the bouncing damage is increased from 1.5 grids to 1.7 grids. So the bouncing distance is a little bit further this time. And also, the decay per bounce for her attack is decreased from 25% to 20%. So that means previously whenever she attacks, the first person that receives the hit is 100% attack, followed by 75%, 50%, and 25%. Now it has changed to 100%, 80, 60, 40. So in a sense, there's a less damage reduction as a chain caster, but I wouldn't say that this is supposed to be any strong reason for you to build a laser. Despite the nice buff that she got, but I still think her kit needs more rework. Which in fact, I think Leitzi is the only operator in the game that will receive two buffs in total. So this is her first buff, there is another buff that will happen in a future update which ups her base attack. So, oh well, so it, it clearly shows that there's something wrong with her kit and at least they're working on trying to improve it in some way. Stay with me, two more critical information I'll share with you guys. This is not confirmed, okay? Do not take my word for it, but there is a huge, huge chance that Pure Stream is getting added to recruitment in this update. So if you missed the WWF event where you can buy a pack to get a Pure Stream at $1, or you chose not to buy it because you're free to play or you had no money to pay for it at that point in time, then now you can get a Pure Stream in recruitment. This recruitment update comes along with Postima, Waifu, Mei, and Pure Stream. And I'm quite happy about these four operators that they're adding because each of them have a bit of a uniqueness to them. Number one, Pure Stream has been a bit of a special operator, right? Since a lot of people don't have it and don't even have her max pot, only one pot of her. So now you can get her at max pot by trying to obtain her in recruitment. She's basically a recruitment exclusive operator now. The only sad thing is that in order to get a Pure Stream, there, there are no confirmed texts for Pure Stream. The only thing that you can put is healing and medic. So try your best to keep putting healing medic at 7 hour 40 minutes in order to get a pure stream max pot if you're wanting to do that. After that, you have Mei. Mei has sniper slow, so she shares the exact same text as Shia Yuki. But at least she has some guaranteed text. So this is very nice for me. And then Waifu has debuff fast redeploy. There isn't a lot of operators who have two 4 star text that make a 5 star. So if you see debuff fast redeploy together, this is a waifu. Of course, they're gonna nerf it and make it appear less, but I have a lot of people forgetting that guard defense is Astasia, and they missed the chance to get a new 5-star or potential for a 5-star that they have. The final one, Mostima will appear with top operator of course, and she does have a bit of a confirmed combination, which is top operator, crowd control. So if you've been wanting to get a Mostima, then now's your chance to get it via this text. She also has top operator AoE, but then top operator AoE is being contested together with Ifrit. Both Ifrit and Mostima have top up AoE, so you may have to gamble a little bit if you only want one of the two. And I end off this video to talk about the claim all button. So many, many, many people are asking about it on my previous video, are asking about it on Facebook. I'm getting tired of seeing this claim all button request. I know you guys are wanting it to rush and you guys are saying, okay, once they give it to us, we'll make less noise. But please calm the heck down, it's gonna come. I know you guys want this quality of life change as well. Let me tell you when it's gonna come now. There's a very low chance that claim all button will enter this update. It's probably gonna be attached to a future update which the event that will release the claymore button is interlocking competition. Which means if right now it's preloading lights, then two events after this, we're gonna get interlocking competition and we'll get the claymore button. So the minimum is that we'll receive it in one month. If right now the event is a walk in the dust and then they have to go through a few more events until they reach interlocking competition, that means the latest that they can release claymore button is three months from now. So I'm gonna give this timeline that it's gonna take a maximum of three months for the claymore button to appear. It may take as short as now, meaning it comes together with this update. I will tell you guys again if it does. I'll probably make a short video to celebrate if it does come with this update. But if not, we gotta wait about one month to three months to see the Claymore button come. Please stop typing, where's the Claymore button? It's annoying. It's like that one meme where the guy is in the bed and he just doesn't want to hear the noise that's coming from the next door, alright? That's me right now. I'm like an old man that I don't want to hear Claymore button already. Just play the game. Let's have some peace. <laughs>
<laughs> okay, I think I've updated more about the user interface and that will probably make the next video into the event update. They're about to announce the next event very soon. I think they're gonna announce it today when I post up this video or if not tomorrow. We gotta wait out and see what happens. Okay, hope you guys enjoyed this video and I shall see you in the next one. Seven.